Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And guess what? I'm sponsored there, boys and girls. Yeah, buddy. Manscaped. Go check it out. 20% off if you promo code Perlo Dance or Steel Flyers. If you need some unruly hair removed, you want Manscaped. I got, I got, they sent me a bunch, and believe me, I'm the poster boy for it. You wouldn't want to see my back. You won't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna put, I'm, I'm gonna take, they gave me this really cool thing, and I'm gonna make it look cool. I'm gonna put Perlo Dance right, like it's like a tattoo, but it's not. I'm gonna do that. Show that to you. Okay, today I'm going to be talking about DeBrusque, where he may be traded. He's asked for a trade, don't you know? Where he might go and what all happened there. Evander Kane. Down to the minors. What's he doing? What's going to happen with that? Does he have a chance to come back into the NHL, you think? Tell me down there in the comment section if you think so. And uh, the New Jersey Devils, uh, they, they announced quite the contract, and we're going to look at that as well. Before we go, though, sub yourself up, hit the like button. I got like 300 to 1,000 people watching and zero likes. Zero Nobody likes it. It comes on and they're like, oh, I got to watch the Perlo show again. All right, here we go. Oh, this is, why do I do this every day? It sucks so bad. <laughs> I don't know. It, like they, they have an analytics thing where they show you like reoccurring people and there's lots, but you're not hitting the like button because you don't like it, I guess. Yeah, I know, maybe... Maybe it's hard to do. Try it. Just It makes you feel good on your insides. It makes me feel good on my insides, too. Hit the like. Then more people in the land will watch it. And we will get the, the jet o frolic. There will be frolic. And I'm going to come to all of your lands. And we're going to go to hockey games together and eat bacon and chocolate. So, who doesn't want that? Just for that alone. For bacon and chocolate, hit the like button. And subscribe. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on in the wonderful world of the NHL. Evander Kane. I just said we were going to talk about that, right? So we're going to talk about that. Reports to the HL, but door to the Sharks still a long ways away. By the way, this is The Athletic. Very good publication. It is a monthly fee. It's well worth the monthly fee. Fantastic articles in there. Uh, it wasn't specifically voiced by Evander Kane or anyone else on Tuesday in the winger's first media availability with local reporters since the conclusion of last season. But just in case there are any ambiguity stemming from Assistant General Manager Joe Will's conference call on Sunday when Kane was placed on waivers, the plan seems clear. Kane will attempt to resurrect his NHL career with another organization, whether that be sooner or later, and the stint in the AHL Barracuda is the first step to the pot. And uh, this is what I'm, I, I was wanting to see. And this is my take, okay? I think Kane's going to get back. All right? Uh, he, he had a gambling problem. And having a gambling problem, usually, uh, I, it, not usually, it always, any kind of addiction like that. Being a person that's kind of went through something like this, there's stuff that has to be kind of taken care of in your life and in the way you are and your personality and all of those things like that. To come out of this, and first of all, we just, we're, we're, we're rooting, I'm rooting for Kane here because I've seen many people that you would think was a bag of poop they got through something like this and you just saw a whole brand new person. Now, I have a feeling we're going to see that with Mr. Kane. We have a good plan in place, Kane said, uh, following his first practice with the Barracuda on the ice. I'm not really going to go into that much, but I'm looking forward to it. I love it. Great attitude. Didn't go down there and sulk or anything like that. He's going down there to crush it. 
uh, you know, bottom line, he wants to be back in the NHL. And there's only one way. If he does the right things, he'll get back there. Stay away from the casinos, buddy. <laughs> you know, but most of all, whatever it was inside, apparently there was a lot of uh, issues with his attitude. And uh, in fact, there was reporters and players that said that he was basically miserable. He was a miserable, he was in a miserable place in his life for whatever reason. Um, they don't know how long he's going to be there. Nobody knows the future. I'm excited to see him play. This is his agent. I think he's excited. He got a new agent, by the way. And it looks like they're just taking a positive approach here and going to go crush it in the AHL and be a good teammate. I'm going to be doing my own thing, getting myself prepared, handling my business, as I'm sure they have. Said he was unaware of any rift in the dressing room until reports surfaced in the summer. Okay, that's kind of odd. But there seemed to be. And I'm a little bit concerned about when he said that he's unaware when everybody it seems to have said they didn't want him there. But one of the big things that can happen is that sometimes a player, like players in the room quite can, can often not say what's on their minds. And they, they just watch what's happening and they're frustrated by it, but they don't actually say anything. It's possible that that happened in that situation. Um, but the fact of the matter is he knows it now. And I'm sure they've worked out some things that they need to see from him to get back into the NHL. And I just wanted to say I'm rooting for him big time. I, I love seeing people overcome personality issues that cause addiction and all of those sort of things like that. I think it's awesome. I think he's going to succeed. And I hope you all think that too. Tell me what you think. Do you think he deserves another shot? Um, he had problems in Buffalo. He had problems in Winnipeg. He's had problems here. Do people de deserve unlimited shots if they look like they're going forward in their life? What do you think? Uh, interesting. To, it's going to be very interesting to watch what Evander Kane does there in San Jose, in the AHL. I, I mean... His talent, the guy could, who where, where the Barracuda, I believe he's going to, like they must be, as long as his attitude is good, my gosh, they must be jumping for joy. They'll be selling tickets all over the place. He's a 30-goal scorer in the NHL. That could be like a 70-goal scorer down in the AHL. Uh, anyways, enough of that. New Jersey Devils, Jack Hughes signs eight-year, $64 million extension with the Devils. And I've already had some discussions with some people from the New Jersey Devils. Not the, I don't know the upper brass, <laughs> but good old souls like you and I who like to talk about hockey, that know their game well, that know their team well. And most people I hear are pretty happy. Some people, there's always the people out there, and they can have a point. I'm not putting you down, that say, he hasn't earned it yet. And, and so, you know, he shouldn't get, they don't believe anybody should get money that they haven't earned yet. In other words, the numbers he's put up have not expressed $8 million a year. And you can't argue with that. That's, that's true. The numbers he has put up is not, have not said $8 million a year. 31 points in 56 games in 2021 uh, is the highest he's had in his very, very, very young career. Uh, $8 million for that does not translate. Those numbers do not translate to an $8 million player. Is he an $8 million player right now? No, he's not. You're what, but of course, what we're unfortunately forced to do, maybe you want to say unfortunately forced to do in the NHL, is if you want to keep players like uh, like Jack Hughes, who they 
you know, they've already invested a very high draft pick for it. Wasn't a number one overall. Uh, then you got to pay them up here because if you don't, they get a window of opportunity. Like, say they were to go to a bridge here, he can get closer to that free agency mark, and um, then things get more expensive, or maybe the team doesn't do as well, and they you end up losing them in the long run. $8 million a year. The question now, what is an $8 million player, since we're talking about it, 31 points in 51 games, would translate to about... 50 and 82, 50 some and 82. Right now in the NHL, it seems an $8 million player. You got Duchesne who's making $8 million, who is getting just under a point a game right now. That seems to be the value. Somewhere around 70 points for an $8 million player. The question is, is Hughes a 70 point player or more? And I would say with the trajectory that he's on right now, 51 points as a 19-year-old, or sorry, 31 points in 51 games as a 19-year-old, it would seem highly, highly likely that he's a 70-point player in the NHL eventually. Maybe a couple of years. I, from what I've watched of him, I could see it as soon as next year or the year before. He hasn't even reached his peak yet, and he's hitting 51. There's a lot of NHLers that would be happy with the 51-point, 55-point season, period, let alone at 20 years old. I say this contract is fine. New Jersey Devils, the New Jersey isn't also the sexiest city that every team, everybody, every player out there is clamoring to get. Uh, they, the, the talks about it here, this was Corey Massasak, it's a Devils beat writer, who said they have their two young cornerstones, Hughes and Nico Heischer, locked into contracts through at least 2027. And number one defenseman Dougie Hamilton locked through 2028. Jersey believes those players can be the foundation of them. And if you believe that they are, and if you believe that Hughes can be a 70 point or plus player, how else are you going to get a player like that? Either you got to go somewhere else and pay the $8 million after they've already put up those numbers and hope they're going to come to your city. A player like that's going to have lots of options. Or you take the guy that you've groomed who wants to be there and you pay him the money. I can't blame him for that. I have to say that I think that this is a good contract. This is a half, it's pretty much a half to do contract, I would say. What do you guys think? Am I full of beans or what? Let me know if I, if I, if I know what I'm talking about there. You know what I love about going on the Facebook groups and stuff like that when I talk about these things? Is sometimes, quite often, I'll go into those groups. And I, as you can tell, I know a lot about every team. It's what I do for a living. But I go, I learn a lot of it. From going into those groups. Nobody knows their team. I don't know people's teams usually as much as the diehards that follow every minute of it all the time. And, and I go in there and that's where I go, hey, you know what? I never thought about it that way. That's why I love doing it. And that's why I love doing videos like this. I share them out there. Go over to my Facebook page, uh, Perlo, just search Perlo Wisdom on Facebook. Sign yourself up there. I post these videos on there and you can chat with me there as well. I enjoy doing it. Uh, uh, I will go over a few things here, but they're not the big things. King Brandon Lemieux gets five five games for biting the senator, Senators Brady Kachuk. Can't bite people, dude. I, I it's Brady Kachuk. I'm sure he's not innocent, positive of it, <laughs> but you can't bite people, Brandon. You can't. That's simple as that. Like. Uh, I don't know what makes you go, like, that's the kind of thing that makes Kachuk so valuable, actually. He can drive you absolutely freaking bonkers. And Lemieux let it get to him, and he lost out on a lot of money, time for his team, and he was playing really well this year. It's unfortunate, man. Very unfortunate. Uh, Islanders cleared to resume play. 
after the COVID-19 break. That's cool. Everybody's back. Going to be cool to see if the Islanders can turn their season around now. It's been a tough go so far. But really what I wanted to get into was the Jake DeBrus trade possibility. He has asked for a trade. Uh, flat out publicly said he wants to be traded. So we'll look at uh, beat writer Fluto. Cool name. Shinzawa. I love it. That's an awesome name. <laughs> the trade request comes after Bruce, Coach Bruce Cassidy was critical of DeBrusque's defensive work. And I've been watching a lot of him, and he doesn't look good. I, I'm going to admit that he doesn't look good. Now, that can be for so many different reasons. Uh, he's He's got all the tools, but like it was not the first time Cassidy has been displeased with the left wing. Uh, Cassidy noted on several occasions last season that he needed DeBrus to be more competitive and show a greater second effort on plays. And I, I can't disagree with that. It's so true. Um, that's when you watch him, it's like he gives up too quick. Um, he doesn't put his body out there, and he's a big body guy that has to kind of do that, especially on that. Uh, and then they went out and got Hall, who – is now their second line left winger. And I think he's sitting there. I think he's just lost confidence. I think there's a more a morale issue. Maybe, possibly, that could be it. And he can't seem to get himself going. Uh, but now they're stuck with a guy who is making four some million dollars a year. And, uh, you know, has been called out by his coach. So what do you do? Like the the trade value probably isn't very high. However, let's look at it. Um, Four point eight five million. This is on Pro Hockey Rumors, written by uh, Gavin Lee, great writer for uh, the Pro Hockey Rumor Group, um, and a very really good publication for rumors. They're usually bang on. Uh, there is usually some pretty good fire out there before these guys start saying stuff. Uh, He's been healthy scratched. Uh, like I said, they went out and got Hall, which basically discluded him from being on the second line. Uh, he's on the second year of a two-year deal at 3.675. Oh, cap hit. Oh, that's what the cap hit is, right? It's $4.85 million in the second season. The cap hit's only 3.6, but at the end of this deal... He's going to need to get a qualifying offer, which is going to put him over $5 million. So somewhere along the line here, he's got to prove and somebody's got to believe that he's a second-line player. Uh, it still appears, though, the previous production and obvious skill sets, and we'll get into his previous production in, in a second here, uh, is... Has teams interested? The Edmonton Oilers, the Calgary Flames, the St. Louis Blues, and the Carolina Hurricanes are among. And I've also heard the Vancouver Canucks, but these are the ones that are come out in this publication. Ryan Rashog of TSN is the one that first broke the trade request and uh, talks about these teams that are that are interested. I mean, he's a he's a pretty solid guy to be listening to for rumors of this such. So there's probably some pretty good reasoning behind it. Uh, General Manager Don Sweeney did confirm the trade request to reporters today, explaining that the disgruntled forward would prefer a new opportunity. So let's first look at uh, the Boston Bruins. We'll look at uh, where DeBrusque Went, what went wrong? Where 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 has he been? What's the trajectory of his career here? Uh, Forty three points in his first year in seventy games. That is really darn good production. Forty two and sixty eight, thirty five and sixty five, and then boom, last year just falls off the map. And this year, six points in eighteen games. Even that isn't actually all that bad. When I've watched him, his offensive production doesn't seem. It seems to be that they have a serious issue with his defensive work and his uh, second efforts. And his attitude possibly 
towards this being brought up to him that he needs to be that way. And I don't know. It appears that these teams that I just mentioned still have interest. So let's look at the teams and possibly who would be going back the other way if they were to do something like this. Uh, the first one I wanted to look at what they mentioned was the Carolina Hurricanes. And um, I think this would be a way, they see a way to, to maybe move on from Nino Niederreiter, who also is in another contract situation. And I don't know, he doesn't seem to get a chance. It, it doesn't seem to have lasting power on any team he goes to. But it's possible that the Boston Bruins could give him another shot. Um, he puts up decent points. Uh, I don't really know what the problem is. He's big. He's solid. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, lifestyle, something. Maybe he's a loner in the room. I don't know. But they might want to give DeBrusque a shot. They, they, they seem to be a team that likes to give guys second chances, uh, such as... Uh, we know with uh, Anthony D'Angelo, um, as uh, and uh, they they seem to be really good at bringing up young players. So he got a really good opportunity there. To DeBrusque would get a really good opportunity there on the third line to try to build up his career. Learn from a guy like Jordan Stahl. It does make some sense. The Edmonton Oilers, of course, comes up, and that's mostly because. Louis DeBrusque is in the organization as a commentator and uh, analyst. Um, his his fa their father. So I'm sure his father is like, hey, you know what? Let's give. I I think I know what's going on with Jake. Um, if you bring him over here, I'm sure we can work things out, and he can become a really good player for him. The problem again is cap space. Uh, I don't know who would be going back here to tell you the honest truth. Um, I can't see, like, Kaylor Yamamoto. Are they going to do something like that? I, I hope not. Uh, maybe Zach Cassian. Uh, I would have to be somebody with some term. Maybe Russell and they throw in some picks. The Russell to make to even it up a little bit. But even that, they don't have the cap room to take it on. Russell, somebody else. Uh, maybe uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Russell, Derek, Ryan, and Picks or something like that. It would be a difficult trade, but it does make sense that they would come up just because of the familiar familiarity of it all. Try to get that. I couldn't get that word out. Familiarity of it all. Um, where's the other teams here? Oh, it's over here. Hurricanes, and the St. Louis Blues. Um, the St. Louis Blues, Tarasenko. That's, there's been talk about Tarasenko for quite some time going there. Uh, I'm not sure about the St. Louis Blues. Oh, no, sorry, the St. Louis Blues, yes. Um, Oilers, Calgary, St. Louis Blues, and Carolina. Yeah, St. Louis Blues, it would be Tarasenko. That's... Tarasenko still wants to be traded, apparently. So uh, they would have work out a deal for cap space and all that. Maybe St. Louis has to add. But those four teams are the ones that came up. Uh, the, another one that came up was the Seattle Kraken. Um, and that was for a guy like Appleton. Because they've got lots of room to give this guy all the chance in the world to become a better player. Actually, I think the Seattle Kraken might work better than anybody here um, because there's no pressure. There would be no pressure there. He, If he doesn't work out, he can they can grab a draft pick for him, send him out to free agency, as long as it's not going to cost much. Like um, there was talk about maybe Mason Appleton. Uh, they have cap space. They're probably not going to give up picks, but maybe Mikkel Wenberg or something like that. Uh, some, somebody that they're not – Totally holding on to, and I think maybe Alexander Wenberg one, might be that guy who is really a major perimeter player, might work better in Boston uh, as a center with some of the talent they have there, somebody like that. But those are some of the place uh, teams that are still interested. And it goes to show you how much people still really like 
to brusque and, you know, still remember what kind of player he can be in the NHL. So what do you guys think? This should DeBrus, where do you think DeBrus could be traded? Would you like your team to have the opportunity to trade him? Uh, what do you think about the New Jersey Devils con- uh, contract with uh, Hughes and Kane? I've heard people say Kane should be booted out of the league. Do you th- is that what you guys got? Tell me what you think there in the comment section. That's my full 42. Thanks for listening in. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.